Welcome once again to Cinemaholics, the major motion podcast where we talk about the biggest and best films coming to theaters and streaming online. I'm John Agroni and I hate recording podcasts on Mondays. And over here, we of course have Will Ashton, also known what as up? The Deep Dish. Yeah, it's the movie event of the summer, guys. Get excited. Well, you said, guys, Will, does that mean we have a special guest? Reveal yes, it. we do. I don't think it would be fair if we didn't bring on our guest here for this episode. He's Some man... would call him a bit abnormal. Hmm. He's the man that watched Garfield the movie with me 12 times in, I think that was 2018? Was that the year we did season three? Yeah, I, I think that's he's right. He's nodding, yeah. yeah. I, I know he's a Garfield super fan like myself. It's someone whose opinion I value very much and a good friend of mine as well as yours. It's Matt Serafini. Hey, hey guys, Matt. thanks for having having me on again. We love having you on, Matt. It's just like an extra friend, you know? Mm -hmm. Garfield and friends, you know, Matt Serafini and friends. And the sure, friends hell are yeah. Doing well. <laughs> yeah, Matt, we're, we're glad to have you, you know, especially because I feel a little surrounded. I mean, look, I, I love Garfield too, but I feel like the love that you and Will have for Garfield is... It's a different, it's it's a different level, right? And and I'm I'm proud to admit that. Sure. Uh, I mean, you know, not mine. I I don't want to speak for Matt, but I feel like my love is like, it started out sincere, <laughs> then it became non-existent, then it became ironic, then it became sincere again. Perfect. Yeah. Like it's, yeah. it's been a a wild journey. <laughs> And this was over, over just time. the past few weeks, right? <laughs> sure. It, 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 it could be any timeline, really. I feel like it just kind of cycles in that span. But no, I mean, I think uh, weirdly, like, I don't want to dive into it all that much because I don't think it really relates to the film. But yeah, maybe it does. Like in the past, I don't know, I want to say maybe like five, ten years Garfield has become kind of like this omnipresent meme where the fact that he is a sort of centralized character who has kind he's of the not Internet's really cat. The well, Internet's not only like that, but like he's a character who's kind of stayed complacent. Like there's been like mild evolutions to the comic, like different characters get introduced. Dynamics change very slightly, but it's been a very kind of stagnated comic. Intentionally, yeah, he's so. roughly roughly the same status quo as when it right. debuted like forty years ago. <laughs> that everyone's so familiar with him and the and those kind of specific things that the internet has kind of used that to their advantage to like kind of turn Garfield into anything and anything they want him to be. He can be like an omnipresent being. He can be like this sort of like bizarre anti version of Garfield. There's like stuff like Garfield minus Garfield where it's just a strip of Garfield without Garfield in it, which is probably one of the better things that's come out of this. It, it's just like this weird sort of, I don't know, like, I guess parody of sorts, but it's more like just like kind of taking the mythos of this character in a way that like you don't really see with other comic strips like Peanuts or Calvin Hobbes or anything of, of similar vein, or at least same popularity, maybe not of the same quality, but like kind of becoming something more than... <laughs> But also in line with something that is just so, like we said, omnipresent, commercialized to the point where everyone knows who Garfield is. Everyone kind of knows the core tenets of the character. Like you said, John, it's the Internet's cat. He's the big, fat, lazy cat that everyone knows and, and at least tolerates. I, I can't speak for everyone as far as they, if they love him. But yeah, I mean, I don't know if that was the genesis or the fuel that, that got this movie off the ground or if it was just the. Uh, Hey, it's been nearly 20 years since the last time we did this. Let's try it again. But uh, Garfield's always had a mainstream segment. I mean, you don't have to like factor the internet stuff into it, I don't think. And I will, I would push back just slightly. I'd say that there are two comic strips that have at least been in spitting distance of the Garfield memification. And I would, I would posit them. I disagree. I think Calvin and Hobbes does have some of that. It does have some of that, like, let's experiment with the Calvin and Hobbes stuff because I've seen plenty of Calvin I mean, and Hobbes kind of like riffing and also the Nancy comics. Sure. Nancy's it's a good not the same person. level as Garfield. I'm not going to be that guy, but you know, mm -hmm. but like in a way that like, if you read modern Heathcliff, Heathcliff is a character in a comic that's kind of just evolved into something so 
bizarre and like self-aware that like there's no attempt to like parody or like kind of satirize that people are just kind of just like oh that's weird and like oh it's actually kind of funny <laughs> at times but like, garfield is just so standardized i guess nancy is probably a good comparison point or maybe like something like kathy or something where it's just like so not only familiar but just so kind of ingrained into pop culture obnosis that like it just there's like almost like a desire to fight against it by making these kind of bizarre high concept art pieces around this character because even though obviously this is a very heavily licensed and franchise character there's like this desire to like kind of make him almost like a folklore symbol of just whatever millennial uh, people want him to be or not to be <laughs> matt matt Serafini, you've known Will for a legend. long time you've known <laughs> yeah. Will for a while and, and and matt can we agree that like it just seems like when it comes to garf that like nothing opens up our boy will quite like this orange cat uh, yeah, just, just hearing will pontificate on this yeah i would i could have you could have kept going for another 20 minutes i I will say it's still very strange to me that Garfield is a Nickelodeon property now. I think that's always going to be a little bit weird to me, but you know, that's neither here nor there. Cause this isn't even a Nickelodeon movie, which surprised me. So no. this is Sony Sony, which is in the news right now, as we record this in the process of buying Alamo draft house, I assume because they want the Garfield movie to play at the Alamo draft house exclusively, but We'll have to see about that, I guess. Yeah, Sony is back with a Garfield movie. It's the first Garfield movie since, I think, Tale of Two Kitties. And, I mean, Garfield has still been around. The comic strip is still going. Jim Davis is still kicking. First first theatrical movie. Uh, Theatrical movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to offend anyone. I enjoyed Garfield Gets Real when I watched it like 15 years ago. Is it bad? Okay. Will's giving it the X. I don't know. Mm. I just I I remember it not being particularly good, but I do know that that movie. If you pay attention, there they, they there's like a shot where like they have a bunch of Garfield comics in the background, and someone I I don't know if the animators were trying to pull a fast one or if they were lazy, but they took a parody of a Garfield strip and put it on the wall. So you, if you look closely, you can see like the F word and like a few other th- like bad things put in the background because I guess. Whoever made it just didn't care or just wasn't paying attention to that. So well, that's the main thing I remember about that movie. There was also Garfield's Fun Fest, and there was also Garfield's Pet Force, and which was a bastardization of the, the novel series. Matt and I were kind of dishing on Pet Force right before we started recording this. And I mean, it's uh, it, it makes Marvel look like a freaking joke. <laughs> we can just put that out there, I would say. But yeah, that, I mean, look, that's 2009. So that's 14, 15 years ago, like you said. And it, it's just, it's been so long since Garfield had a theatrical release. Why do you guys think it's been so long? Like, wh- why do you think, what do you think the holdup has been? Because they're, they have been talking about going back to the Garfield well theatrically since as early as 2016. You know, there, there were plenty of distributors who were looking at this and saying, like, let's do it. You know, Viacom got their hands on Garfield for a while and. It wasn't. Uh, it wasn't until like the early 2020s that this movie started to get put together. So uh, theories. I need pitches. Theories. What do we got? Well, I mean, I think the big thing, as made evident by this film and the story that it chose to tell, is that, I mean, there are like obviously the cart. There's a cartoon show and various other thing and various other forms of media that have spun, I guess, short form stories out of the thing. But I think the truth of the matter is that Garfield doesn't really expand beyond maybe 30 minute storylines just because it's a three panel strip <laughs> sometimes six panels i guess on sundays that you know it, it's kind of you know a very simple very standardized kind of thing that doesn't really justify feature length narrative because it's you know more or less just garfield trying to pull a fast one on john or garfield kicking Odie or garfield eating lasagna or Garfield swatting the spiders or whatever. Like there's not a whole lot there narratively <laughs> by the core conceit. Obviously I think someone can do something like, I think you could 
if you really push came the shove, make a really solid like 75, maybe 80 minute car film movie. But I don't think that's really what the studios want. I think they want something that is like this movie a little bit more crassly commercial. Like I, I think doing something that is maybe a little bit more simplistic and, and maybe in the vein of something like the Peanuts movie would be not only against the studio's interest, but maybe against Jim Davis's own interest because he is a hound for franchising and, and marketing this character. And I think he wants Garfield to have extended ties to Olive Garden and Amazon and apps <laughs> and all these things. So I, I can't say like this movie disrespects his vision, I guess, in the sense that I think he he probably was the guy who signed off on this and encouraged them to, to get as many licensing deals as possible. But I would, if I were to theorize, I think it's just that, you know, obviously it's like there's money on the table here. Garfield is a, a well-known property. He's a, a well-known franchise. We should do something with that. We should make a movie of it. But when you put pen to paper, it's like, well, what's the story? Like, I mean, and, and I think this movie kind of goes out of its way to make a story for Garfield that we can discuss in more detail later. But that would be my guess for why it took so long. Because th- th- those original movies, I think everyone kind of disagrees, are like, that that's not what Garfield is. And that's not what we should strive for. <laughs> yeah, I mean, as far as what they should do with the property, that I think that was probably a holding point for a while. Yeah. I liked that first movie when I was a kid. I was a dumb little kid. Dumb little stupid kid. Same. I don't know. I- yeah. I also do think it's worth noting that this is one of those movies that has like a hundred production logos at the beginning of it. So I would say probably part of it was just trying to get funding. <laughs> <laughs> Which to me is kind of, you know, look, we're in, we're in the age of IP, right? If something has an IP attached to it, that's that. And we're also in the age where last year, the Super Mario Brothers movie made over a billion dollars at the box office. And I think Sony was kind of, looking at those box office totals and being like, shoot, our Garfield movie comes out next year. Let's release it. And I think they probably already had the release date window, but they were probably looking at it like, all right, this is going to be our Memorial Day weekend movie. It's going to come out. It's going to, it's going to destroy. It did not destroy. It's done well. This movie has done well. It has not done billion dollar business. It cost $60 million to make in its budget, which it shows. I mean, it's not a very glossy movie or anything. It's not kind of, you know, you're watching it and you're just like, I, I, how do they do it? But, you know, it's made just shy of $200 million worldwide. So it's it's already made, you know, it's more than triple its budget. That's a great sign. It, I don't think that they dumped a ton of money into marketing, honestly. Like they did, they put their their numbers in for sure, but they kind of they did the illumination thing. Illumination is famous for this. So they, they they managed to keep their animated movie budgets basically under control, usually under a hundred million dollars, and it's kind of created cash cows for them, even outside of Minions and all that. I mean, Secret Life of Pets, for example, famously $70, 80000000 million budget, that thing made a billion dollars. I mean, it's Illumination, what are you going to do? But this specifically is Sony, and Sony has had kind of a, I think, a struggle with a brand identity in terms of their animated movies. I mean, give me three or four Sony animated movies, and I can't tell you what the connective tissue there is. It's always got to be an unspeakable thing, right? Because sometimes you look at these things and like the movies are very different from each other, but like, you're like, I know that that is a Pixar thing or that is a is DreamWorks this, thing. I want to qu- clarify. I don't think this is Sony pictures animation. It is not. You're right. Yeah. It's Sony pictures releasing. So yeah, that's the weird. thing too. Production companies, like you said, it, it's a long list. Alcon entertainment or Alson, whatever they're called was like, they were the first kind of uh, production company that was like, we're going to put this thing together years and years ago. But then they brought on Columbia at a certain point, I think mainly probably for their casting and kind of putting together the the main tools. And then Stage 6, Wayfarer, a few others I'm forgetting. But like, it's a lot. It's a lot. The movie itself, I'll, I'll give the rundown. And then Will Ashen's going to go nuts. He's going he's gonna to feast. But basically, it's a long lost father plot. It's the origin of Garfield. It's a slick kind of CG animated movie. Honestly, kind of looks like it was made in like 2016, 2017 when they first were talking about this movie even coming about. And this movie also made headlines because it is like the 14th or 15th Chris Pratt voice actor role that he's Mario. He's this. He was in the Pixar movie Onward. Chris Pratt saturation or pressuration. Sorry, uh, just never ends. And 
Also, hey, look, they, they also have Samuel L. Jackson. They also have Hanny, Hannah Waddingham from Ted Lasso and Game of Thrones. Ving Rhames, Nicholas Holtz. I mean, it's a strong cast for sure. Uh, Snoop Dogg shows up. Give him some love. And yeah, long lost father plot. We kind of have uh, this like, go ahead. It's not Snoop Dogg in this movie. Okay, it's well, actually. Snoop Cat. Okay, yeah, you did it. Uh, and also, yes, Brett Goldstein from Ted Lasso. Let's give Brett. Let's yeah, you're right. You're right. Brett him. Goldstein. I mean, yes. but when even Yang, I think also, I think even if it didn't have two or three prominent Ted Lasso actors here, I think the Ted Lassoing of the movie is pretty apparent. Like it just it, it, it's weird to me that this movie. You've never watched Ted Lasso. You I've watched saying some of this, Ted Lasso. You're like, hey, this yeah, is what like the Ted hell Lasso. Are you talking about the Ted Lasso. What this this had nothing to do with Ted Lasso. Hey, can it's because Will's never seen thought? the show. He can only I knows about Ted Lasso. Thought? He only knows about it through osmosis, Matt Serafini. Your discourse, and so, yeah. No, okay, hang on. I what I'm trying to say here is that they are you know obviously it's it's a comedy and obviously it, it's trying to you know, be slapsticky and, and fun and all this, but it's also it's trying not to be Lasso. imparting a good hearted message about like connectivity and emotional bonding in a way that I feel is, I, I think that's what people are starting to push back against. Is that's that like not really a Ted? Okay, you, that's okay. just well, Lasso, like that's later storytelling in, Ted, in general. Having like yeah, a positive yeah. spin that that's like kids Ted movies. La- exactly, Ted Lasso has a you're... much more specific thing going on there, Washington. But Matt, Matt, and I will give you a whole other lecture. You know, we'll we'll help you out. I, if I anything, think I think that there's more SNL here because you you do have the two SNL stars, right? You have Cecily Strong and you have Bo and Yang, and I would say it's more of a piece with that. Me personally. I, that is a far broader thing, and I think that would deserve more criticism than you two gave me. But modern I, I, SNL, I'll be more specific. I, again, much, even broader of a thing. But the last you know, couple that's, that's of like, years of SNL, what do you want? I, yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I do watch more SNL than you do these days. Uh, I, I, I have no. Who did interest Cecily in really. Strong play? She was the the Fargo character, the Mar- uh, Marge character. Yeah. Yeah, the yeah. animal control lady. Um, I don't remember that character. I, I'm going to be honest with you guys right now. I know we haven't really gotten into it yet, but I, I am struggling to remember anything about this movie. Okay, I, yeah, I that's the other admit, thing is that uh, yes, these yes. two are like, how dare you compare us to Ted Lasso? And they're both going to be like, oh yeah, we both fell asleep watching this movie. I so did, like, I did fall asleep while watching. Well, the Garfield conversely, movie. I enjoy Ted Lasso, so I that's why I'm yes. like, how dare Again, you compare it? <laughs> whatever <laughs> but will's arguing he's like well yeah but you didn't watch all of this i watched enough of this movie will <laughs> that i kind of get it like i feel like i got this movie within the first 15 minutes as soon as you get through the whole thing with like we get the flashback and then like here's our villain jinx or whatever and she's a cat and she's mean like i don't know i felt like i was like what else do i need to know about this movie it re- they're really eh. okay that's it The movie does have this kind of like opening montage thing where Garfield's like, here's my life. You know, here's how I adopted John. It's clever. It's kind of cute. It's kind of funny. And then they have this whole thing where they actually like recreate the comic strips a bunch of times to kind of give you the montage. I thought that was charming. I thought that was kind of sweet. And I was kind of thinking to myself, that's the only thing I'm probably going to like about this movie as it was happening. (laughs) But do you guys agree? Disagree? Yes. Yeah, I mean... It's weird to say this, but I liked the movie when it was a Garfield movie, and when it wasn't a Garfield movie, I, I wasn't fond of it because it's like, okay, you gave me like 25 minutes of a Garfield movie, which kind of goes back to what I was saying before, which is I think you have probably that much material inherent right. with Garfield. Yeah. But to justify a feature length story, they have to add all these characters and all these things, which. Yeah, none of the main characters in this are Garfield characters. Yeah, I mean, it's a bizarre thing where... Normal like, has no lines. Normal is there at the very end. I was Doesn't glad say, we at least got the Normal cameo, to be frank. Sure. I I mean, the lack of Normal is one thing, but the fact that Arlene is barely, if, if not all at all in the film... I don't is, think she think, was in it. No, I did, yeah. same with Liz. Liz has, Liz, like, one line. Right. We see Liz, and that's... Yeah, yeah. I think we it's, see Liz It's the twice. comic strip version in yeah, that yeah. scene. Right. It, it's the, the pre-relationship with John Liz, I believe. Yeah, also, like, this movie is kind of a weird relationship with women, which I, I don't know if that's something I want to dive into or, or not, but 
uh, maybe it's neither here nor there, but yeah, uh, suffice to say, a lot of the main figures of Garfield lore are kind of pushed to the side in favor of all these added characters that really, I, I don't really know why they're in the movie for the most part. We'll say Mark Dindal directed the movie. Mark Dindal, who is famously, and just a round of applause for Mark for Emperor's New Groove. Thank you. You did a great job. Sorry about this one. And, and other don't stuff, too. Chicken I mean, Little. I was going to say, I thought you yeah, I I thought was going to I thought he was gonna do a fake out where it's like round of applause, expecting to lead up to Emperor's New Groove, and then he'd be like, "For Chicken Little," of, often regarded as the worst Disney movie yeah. of the modern era. I think people but, are uh, pretty unanimous, right? But it did get uh, a Definitely cameo in uh, in Wish. You got to see Chicken <laughs> Little at the end of Wish. I remember that. I can I can I admit something that's so off topic to Garfield, but like, go for it. I've been going down a wish rabbit hole lately. I've been thinking so much about the movie Wish because I you think probably it's probably thought such a, more about it than anybody else ever. Honestly, I I li- I re-listened to Will and I's conversation about the movie, and I've been watching video essays about the movie, and it, I'm just like fascinated by it. I think it's a fascinating misfire, and so I'm just gonna throw that bomb in there so we can move on back to Garfield stuff, but like. I'm just saying there's something about that wish movie that is just so unbelievable to me, like every aspect of it. But anyway, if there's any good video essays, send them my way because I'm curious. Yeah, there there are a few and I found them actually quite compelling, more fun to watch than the, the movie itself. They're all about an hour at least, <laughs> which is amazing. Uh, anyway, I just watched the four hour Star Cruiser videos, so I'm hype. I'm I still have to finish that. Yeah, I'm it's only halfway good. through that. Yeah, and she. The second yeah, half, I feel like, is even stronger because that's when she starts just straight up criticizing Disney. That's well, I'm at the part where she's still kind of like she's wrapping up like her literal experience of it. But anyway, will I mean, look, I know you're probably going to get to that when you get to that. And, and and I have to start with this in terms of the Garfield movie. As soon as we saw the origin stuff, and somebody like drops Garfield off and like leaves, I was like, no. No, because I didn't watch the trailers. I didn't know like what the plot was going to be. And I was like, no, we're going to do like Garfield has a dad and it's going to be like this stupid gar- like chase scene that lasts the movie. And sure enough, that's what happens. They get kidnapped and it's like all these characters. I'm like, I don't care about them. Odie barely is a factor. And I'm just I don't. They actually got Garfield Odie doesn't wrong. need a dad. Sorry. No. What? Oh, OK, actually, they yeah. actually got Odie wrong. This is interesting because I, I feel I like Odie is one of the things that I like about the movie. So I'm curious, starting with Matt, why you feel like they got Odie wrong? They made him smart. He's like smarter than Garfield. I, sure. I liked that they had him as like Garfield's assistant, but he's right. like fully competent and does things better than Garfield. Like, that's, I think that's actually a kind of fun subversion, though. Like, I don't I'm, like it. I, I think considering... <laughs> That Odie is a character who who so often gets pushed around to the point of having this kind of weird, mean spirited relationship. Again, I I think that's kind of what I'm going for earlier, where it's like the movie is going for something a lot more kind hearted and and buoyant and earnest, I guess, than than what we're used to from Garfield. I I do think, considering that the original Garfield movies got Odie so wrong to a point where he's just some some dog <laughs> i i was grateful that like the design and the the pantomiming and and all the sight gags with, with Odie felt much more in the spirit of what the comics and the cartoons were i mean i don't know i i, I guess you can kind of give or take whether you like smarter than usual od and I'm, I'm not really here to say it's better or worse i i found that to be one of the few kind of refreshing things about this movie personally i agree with you design wise and in fact that's probably one of the only good things i can say about this movie is that it like looks like a garfield movie the animation is pretty good john's description of something from 2016 or 17 is pretty apt i think yeah there's no texture to this movie (laughs) no (laughs) it's it's very cartoonish, but uh, you need it when like Garfield's eating food and stuff. Like you need it to feel mm-hmm. like we, let's feel that gluttony, please. My fundamental issue with this movie is the dad, Vic. 
voiced by Samuel L. Jackson. And I think the issue is that you, you do have, I think, the right kind of concept for the villain. Let the villain just suck. The villain is mean. Jinx is a bad cat. And like we have real I mean, villains here. Uh, the, the crew and stuff, they're like, they're mean. And you're like, wow, we got to beat them. That's fine. But the movie tries so hard to be like, well, Garfield's dad had a good reason for all this stuff. And look, again, I did fall asleep, so maybe I missed some things. But like <laughs> the whole concept around, he's just like, well, I, I, I was just getting food. And he was like checking up on Garfield. And it's like, there's no real reckoning for all that stuff. It just feels so like, then what's the point? It's just a misunderstanding. And it's like, uh, I, I don't know. It, it's just so sure. insipid. It's very conceited, I guess. It's 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 you're kind of typical. Like again, I, I think the movie kind of goes out of its way to sand whatever edges it could possibly have. You can see <laughs> the text the messages between the producers, like on sure. the screen, of like, well, we can't make them too, you know, undesirable. Right. You know, I don't mm-hmm. know why these producers are from New York, but uh, they, they, I wouldn't be surprised if they were. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a few things for one. When you brought up Gluttony, it reminded me that I just recently rewatched Seven, and I was just imagining the the Gluttony scene from that movie with no, Garfield, well, no. <laughs> <laughs> like instead like, of his face and a big bowl of spaghetti, it's just him with a big bowl of lasagna. <laughs> well, hey, you could still do Garfield. Like, I know with the, with the spaghetti. Uh, so that thought, Thanks, that well. image uh, crossed my mind when you does said Garfield that. Represent so. the, the, does the Garfield comic strip represent, represent the seven deadly sins? Will ask you. John is uh, sure. what wrath. He's always <laughs> no, yelling uh, at Garf. Normal uh, is not what, what's like vanity or yeah, yeah, van, yeah, yeah, vanity. Uh, well, who's envy? Uh, Odie is sloth. No, because Odie, Odie works hard. Yeah, I, I uh, think probably Odie Arlene. Is, I think Odie is sin free. I mean, all dogs go to heaven. So <laughs> okay, I, 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 I think Odie is is without sin. Matt wants uh, nothing to do with this. Like, yeah, Matt I just is, look at is Matt is like, deliberately avoiding this conversation. He's I, avoiding I think, eye contact. He's just... I, well, I think. Uh, well, correct me if Pride. I'm wrong. That's what Matt, I was thinking. Have you yes. seen Seven, Matt? No. Okay, I was gonna say. I, I figured that's why you weren't really engaging in this. You're uh, like, all right, well, <laughs> all right. In any case, now I, I'm starting to lose my t- train of thought <laughs> with the with You're Garfield like this movie. The movie. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say. Oh. I, to give the movie maybe slightly more credit than it deserves, there there is a cartoon. There's an episode of the cartoon, or maybe it's, it's a side cart or a comic. I forget which, where Garfield like meets his extended family, but it's his mom, and it's in the Italian restaurant, and he like meets his uncle, like his like uncles and nephews and stuff. And I don't know if this movie was slightly inspired by that or if it was something else, but I I could see a version where that. would maybe play some influence on this film but as it stands yeah i agree with you that like if we're gonna have to introduce garfield's dad and we're gonna have this storyline where he's like you know resistant you know bonding with this dysfunctional absent figure but gets along the movie kind of goes fittingly but unfortunately the kind of lazy route where it's the very paint by numbers like they don't get along they they argue they're they're kind of put on the side quest together they they find similarities there's a misunderstanding they bond you know it, it's 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 so it is though. very yeah it, it's very paint by numbers in that respect it's also sugar-coated into this bizarre milk heist plot that <laughs> that, that, that i don't i i get that the farm is kind of supposed to be maybe a nod or a homage to the barnyard and friends. and friends. Yeah, I, I, I don't know if that's. But they didn't even use given. any of those characters. I know. I was like, that's why right. I was. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry to. I'm sorry to cut through what Will is saying. I just. I have no, to go. Good. I have to come out and say this, and I'm gonna. Please do. This movie sucks. <laughs> I hated this movie. It's so bad. I need to it's just like so pull, like, bad. I I I did not. I going into this, I was like, well, surely. It might not be great, but at least it'll be a better movie, a better Garfield movie than the 2003 Garfield movie, which, as Will said, I watched 12 times a few years ago. You were more optimistic than me, Matt. And I think it is better than that. Oh, you think it's hard? Hard disagree. Hard Hard, disagree. Yeah, Will. Yeah, you don't got this one, Will. No. Mm. I 
I think there are things that that movie does slightly. I, I mean, obviously, for as disinterested as Bill Murray is as a voice actor in that film, I, I think he in, in just inherently embodies the character of Garfield in a way that that Chris Pratt at this point cannot. And that's I don't know. I don't want to get on the train of like palling or dog palling, no pun intended, on Chris Pratt because I think I do and I because I gave him this. a pass. It's okay. I've been giving him a pass. Super Mario, like he did fine, and I was See, I think ready his to hate on him. He was in okay. Super in that Mario movie. is worse than in this movie. No, but not I even think close. He, Super I Mario, it's passable. Mi- Here, it's it's so like I can't. It's so distracting. He's not Garfield. Stop trying to be Again, Garfield. Hire yeah, someone like, else. I, I think the performance in this is better than Mario. However, I think he's more miscast in this than he is in Mario. That he's makes already no miscast sense to me, Will Ashton. Matt, back me up here. What are we doing? I, I don't know, man. This this thing just like it's like you said. There's no all the main characters are not Garfield characters. I hated the Garfield's dad character because just. Purely his design alone invalidates Garfield. Garfield is supposed to be the fat cat and his dad's bigger than him. He's like twice right. the size of him. Stupid. But he's also be like, <laughs> yeah, he's like, well, I, I couldn't provide for Garfield, but he's the biggest cat in town. Yeah. Ridiculous. That makes no sense. Garfield's dad should be funny? tiny. That'd be hilarious. Why is There's also big? a weirdly large amount of time focused on this romance between a cow and uh-huh. a bull. Like to the point that during the credits of the movie, all of the images are seen are of the cow and the bull rather than, you know, that part. Garfield. <laughs> like, I, I just, it's making me mad. And I tr- I wanted to like this. I was all in. I, with a couple of my old roommates, we went to Olive Garden together beforehand and we ate the Garfield oh, yeah. menu. It How was delicious. It? Nice. Okay. I, uh, I mean, it was, that. it's nice. basically, it's just Olive Garden's normal menu. They actually don't even have Garfield on the menu anymore. He does Aww. appear on the little screen that you pay on sometimes, but I had a piece of lasagna and, and my friend got the fried lasagna appetizer and I tried that and it was tasty. But then of course, as I was leaving Olive Garden, I was like, oh, I'm definitely going to fall asleep during this movie. And you know, I did, <laughs> but not for long. Like it was, I just, the only thing I missed was like the end of the heist. Sure. <laughs> Why are there uh, so many trains in this movie? <laughs> uh, that's a good question. Because well, there were in the first movie, in the live action. That's true, yes. Yeah. That's, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, because they're like, just like, uh, how do we up the stakes in this Garfield movie? Well, yeah, it was the 1970s when the comic strip came out, and what, what do you have in the 1970s? You got trains, kid. I don't know. What if What if that's a big stipulation that Jim Davis has when like they make a big movie? train guy. Well, he, he's just like, <laughs> Listen, you can do whatever you want. It just got to have three things: Garfield, and then all the producers nod. And like, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Okay, yeah, that makes two sense. <laughs> lasagna. Everyone, okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, That's sure. Garfield, and he's okay. like three trains. And they're like, oh, okay, and it's like all right, good luck. <laughs> good luck. <laughs> yeah, no, I think with a better voice actor and a completely different script in every possible way, I, I don't know. I feel like there is a there's a good Garfield movie out there in somebody's head. There's a way Fully to do agreed. this. I completely Fully believe that. Garfield and Friends, look, it's not a great cartoon or anything, but that was that to me is Garfield. You know, that's what got me into Garfield. I, I remember yep. going to the book fair, reading Pet Force, and getting like the classic comic strips and like reading from the very beginning of Garfield in the 70s and re- like seeing the art style like improve up to like the 90s not improve but like change to the 90s and being so obsessed with like how the comic strip like that was kind of that was my version of peanuts and it doesn't necessarily need to be a movie i guess but like it, i don't know Could it's it garfield be traditional like, animation i will is it, say is it that hard earlier this year i think i wrote about this in my written review i saw garfield the musical <laughs> Because the local production was happening and it, it right. allegedly was written by Jim Davis or co-written, I should say. I don't know if that's true or not, but he has credit. And the plot of it is basically it's Garfield's birthday. He thinks everyone's forgetting about him. So he tries to be an outdoor cat and he's joined by Liz or not. Sorry, not Liz. Arlene, Odie and Nermal. And it's just like them trying to rough it out and and 
remembering why they love John and, and the Endorus. And there's a lot of songs and stuff, and it's not perfect, but it, it feels very appropriate to the material. And it's about like 60, 70 minutes long. And I was thinking, like, if you just turn this into the movie, it'd be a pretty good Garfield movie. Like, it would be yeah. fine. But instead, they're like, well, it's got to be Oliver and company. Like, what? Right. Yeah, exactly. It's just like, I don't know why this. I mean, as for as much as I love Emperor's New Groove, like the villain of this movie kind of feels like Yzma. Reduced. Yes. Like it's like a like Yzma yeah. square, you know, like it's like it's after she gets without a turned croc. into a cat at the end of That's the That's exactly. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a good. Good yeah. call, Matt. No, I, it, it's it's uh, kind of like galling to see, too, because like I knew going into this that this was the Emperor's New Groove guy. So like when you have that top of mind, for sure. Honestly, though, like my pitch for a Garfield movie Look, lean into how absolutely exploited this comic strip is and basically do the equivalent of the Fairly Odd Parents channel chasers, where you let there be like a Garfield kind of like multiverse kind of thing, where you just like lean into like all the different variations of Garfield. Do I mean literally like Spider Man into the Spider Verse, but I was gonna Garfield. Say, I, I like the Garfield they, Nine Lives is kind of that. Right. I mean I think make that it would absurdist. Be... Make jokes about Garfield minus Garfield in a live and not a live action, but like an animated Garfield movie that plays with different styles. We're talking like that's that's not a billion dollars, but that's like 500 million at least. I mean, what you're pretty much proposing here is like if you got the guys, but like Michael Kuzak and the guys behind Smiling Friends and just had them make their own Spider Verse with Garfield and have like, you know, Fatal Farm. And like all these people make various variations of Garfield. <laughs> Bill Murray all voices together. him. Sure. Literally, Bill, bring back Bill Murray and do like the first part of the movie, like you're doing a version of Barbie, where you're kind of being like, Garfield kind of exists as this meta myth. And then you start to just like explode it into like, we're making jokes about Garfield and friends. We're making jokes about like all the different Garfield memes. The Garfield phone is a literal plot device. The options are limitless. Hollywood, Here's the come thing. on. Here's the thing, though. Never in a billion years would I, I think Jim Davis greenlight that. Davis, much- I, I hate to say this. Jim Davis will not be alive 20 years from now. If he sure, that is, is true. I will eat my hat. He, I mean, that, the man that is Serafini, going to that die. That sounds like a th- cat Serafini. Sorry, that sounds like a threat. And we, we <laughs> that, of course, will say that like we hope threat. Jim Davis lives to be a thousand years old. What if he does? What if he lives twenty one years just to spite Matt? Honestly, I'd buy him a lasagna. Okay, how, yeah, how old is uh, Jim Davis at this point? He has to be. In He's 70s, in his seventies, right? I think. I'll double check. He's eternal. Right. Eternal. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah, Jim Davis. Uh, Seventy eight. Seventy eight. So if he, yeah, if he yeah. lives, hey, look, he's not even as old as Joe Biden. We're good. We'll be fine. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He he can be president. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he has the qualifications. Yeah, he, um, he can. Uh, yeah, he, he he can do it. Jim Davis for and, president. You heard it here th- first. He's running. <laughs> any other <laughs> thoughts on Garfield and I almost said Garfield and Friends, the Garfield movie? Before we, we play the Rotten Tomatoes game, I will say I didn't hate this movie. I I had a very pleasant theater experience. I got a little Garfield plushy. I, I had nice. an edible while I was watching the movie. I, I got lasagna. That, veg- I got vegetable I, lasagna. That's where it matters. I film. went wrong. <laughs> well, I yeah, I I told Will this already, but I'm I'm actually currently on in the middle of a 90 day break from weed, and I thought you were about to say that you're movie, like on weed right now. <laughs> you're like, you're like I'm kind of <laughs> no. in the middle. Of like I've never been this no. high, guys. I I. I'm I'm on a break and I think seeing this movie sober was a full mistake. Like <laughs> outright. I mean, I'm not okay. gonna say it enhanced experience. I think it just made it more tolerable in a way that yes. like I, I don't think I, I think the flaws are evident and I, I think I went into it kind of already like, all right, well, Chris Pratt isn't gonna make sense as Garfield. I don't get this whole Vic thing. I don't know like but watching the movie, I think I just kind of let a lot of those reservations aside <laughs> as much as I could. I mean, obviously, I think, like I said, like, I, I think the movie works in so many ways or, or not in so many ways. Like, it works in enough ways 
for the first 20, 25 minutes, I think it's starts off agreeable, but then it just kind of loses its way and becomes a sort of not misfire, just kind of just becomes a sort of bizarre exercise and commercial rebranding for this well long standing character. And I preferred it to the live action ones, definitely more so than a tale of two kitties. But I'm not going to go out of my way to recommend it. And obviously, I don't think this is the garbage. I will never watch this movie again, but I would watch the live action movie again. Same. I mean, you know, I would watch that first movie again, the the Garfield movie. I I would much rather. (laughs) Maybe 12 more times. Yeah, I I would much rather watch this than A Tale of Two Kitties. I can say that pretty confidently. All right. I would rather watch The Master of Disguise again than watch this movie. Mm, Well, right. Well, I, I would have to agree with you there, I guess, but <laughs> but, but nonetheless, I think that's mainly because Master of Skies is shorter. I, I think on a lighter note, I should say that Matt watched this movie on my birthday, which I think is very sweet. Uh, I We haven't really discussed that. The best but, way to celebrate, Will. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. I hope you, you release a week from today is Garfield's birthday, so I, I don't know when you're planning on releasing this, but right now. Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> I do want to point out, by the way, that the Garfield movie is in the top 10 of the highest grossing films worldwide of 2024. And I want to know, do you guys know what is number one right now? Anybody have a guess? Captain Underpants, the first epic adventure. That's is that that's what? No, that. No. That twenty twenty four. It's is it Dune Part Two right now? It's Dune Part Two. Yeah, it's the yeah, highest grossing film worldwide right now, and domestically. Which, by the way, Garfield movie is not in the top ten domestically. Weirdly mm. enough, it's uh, number twelve. But yeah, Dune Part Two is number one, and followed by Godzilla Kong: The New Empire, mm. which made unbelievably five hundred and seventy one million dollars worldwide. I don't know anybody who saw that movie. Domestic. I thought it was same. Fun. Kung Fu Panda is good. number three. There are two that films mo- from China. Oh, Kung Fu Panda 4, huh? you mean? Four. Kung Fu Panda 4, sorry. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That there are movie... two Chinese films in uh, at four and five, respectively, that I've never heard of. YOLO and Pegasus 2. Hmm. Sure. And then Kingdom of the Planet of the Apes is number six right now. So Disney slash 20th century. Big year for Another uh, Chinese apes. film. Say again? It's a big year for the apes. King yeah, Kong. Yeah, between that and Kong, and maybe there was an ape in Kung Fu Panda. I don't remember, but yeah. And then something uh, called Bonnie Boonie Bear's Time Twist, which is another Chinese, it's like an animated Chinese film. So yeah, I mean, look, hey, four films in the top 10 worldwide are Chinese films, which I guess makes sense population wise. But then Ghostbusters Frozen Empire at number nine, and then the Garfield movie at number 10. Ghostbusters, which by the way, we didn't talk about. I didn't watch, but I still see billboards for Ghostbusters: Frozen Empire, like in the Bay Area. To which I'm just like, this movie came out in March. Why are you advertising to go see this in theaters? It is not in theaters. In anymore. case you forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a um, box. I think that's Dan Aykroyd personally keeping the billboards up so that he can <laughs> maybe get his Oscar train a rolling for later this year. Let's play the Rotten Tomatoes game. Now, we have 127 reviews counted for the Garfield movie. Not a lot. Look, this movie's been out for weeks. What in the world? Like, usually, I feel like we'd be in the 200s to 300s for a movie purportedly to be this big. Came out Memorial Day weekend. There you go. But no, uh, just 127 Critic reviews. Fear. Critics were just like, we don't have time. We're lazier than Garfield. We'll ask you no. what do you think the critics I think, were. Cr- I, I think critics were feared of Jim Davis and, and the reign that he has over modern media right now. I think uh, okay. this movie has a rotten score. I don't know. If, I don't think it's like 30% rotten, but I think it's lower than 50%. I'm going to say 46%. Okay. Well, Ashton guesses 46. Matt Serafini, what do you got? I'm going to cut that in half and say 23. Hmm. How do I do the math here? So it's 36. So I think Will wins because he's within 10 points. So, yeah, but you were both off by quite a lot. <laughs> that was, uh, but yeah, we got to give it to Will. It's funny as I was going to say 35, <laughs> but I was like, it'll be funnier if I cut Will's in half. And now I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> oh, <God>. Wow. <laughs> Matt, we love you. 
audience score. I love you too. 500 plus verified ratings. Why is this review this so are- aggressive? Because <laughs> he watched the dark. Because I hated this movie. <laughs> <laughs> I don't hate movies a lot. Re- you, right. you know this. I try to like most movies. It. So when yeah. I when I hate a movie, I like really come down. <laughs> I, I hope there's a good Spider Man movie coming out soon. Oh my mm. god, Matt, we'll start with you for audience score. Five hundred plus verified ratings. What do you think? Okay, this one I'm gonna say thirty five. Thirty five. All right, Will Ashton. You know what? I'm going to price is right. I'm going to say 36%. 80%. Is that right? It's an 80? 80%. I think, look, honestly, not a lot of people are logging this thing. I think it's just families. I think it's like I took my kids. They shut up for an hour. It was nice. Um, I think that's all there is to it. It's very basic. Yeah, I don't know. It's. I'm not that surprised, I guess. like It's just... If anything, it's not like it's in the 90s or something like that, where people are like, wow, you got to see it. It's more sort of like, yeah, you know, uh, sure. That's kind of what it is. Uh, cinema score, though. Maybe that's going to paint your guesses for that. Well, Ashton, what do you think the cinema score is for the Garfield movie? We have, of course, the highest could be A+, plus, the lowest could be F. A, it's interesting, because, uh, yeah, I was... Uh, I, I mean, I'll still guess this just for the sake of it, but... I was going to guess C for cat just because it just doesn't seem like audiences are like overwhelmingly <laughs> responding to this film. But now I'm starting to think maybe it's in the B or higher. I don't know. Okay. Well, we'll go with C since that's what you said. Matt Serafini, what do you think? Do they do like minuses in this? Yeah. So you could do a minus or a plus. So you okay, could do a C plus. Minus is yeah, where I was going to go. C minus. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. It's a B plus. B plus cinema score, which is kind of like the average for like a Marvel movie. So yeah, usually with those where those land. B and as we'll in boy. Huh? That's I a can't lot get of enough lasagna. Of this Vic. <laughs> I'm gonna give I'm gonna give the movie a couple. I know I know we have one more game, but I'm just gonna give this yeah. a couple nods that I appreciated, which is that in the first like five minutes of this movie, there was not one but two references to Garfield's birthday. Yes. And there was also a reference to Lorenzo Music, the late great guy mm-hmm. who voiced Garfield for a long time. The best Garfield uh, voice actor. Yeah. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. So anyway. Yeah. That's all. Uh, and last up, we'll, I thought, we'll finish things off. Oh, no. Go ahead. Well, actually. No, I was going to say, I thought Matt was going to say the plus is there are not one, but two knots Olive Garden at the beginning of the film. And you were going to be like, can't get enough of the Olive Garden. Yeah. I had it before the film. <laughs> <laughs> they did Mama Leone's, but they didn't even reference Billy Joel's moving out. I mean, come on. Which, to somebody like Matt Serafini, who of course has a glorious mustache, I mean, how could you even consider such I an I will offense? say, this movie, one thing it does have over the live action ones is it acknowledges Blinky the Clown, which I think is nice. I will give you that. That's there fair. was a Blinky that's, that's uh, cereal box. And then we'll finish with the Letterboxd average rating. Now, so on Letterboxd, the social media app for movie lovers. Uh, we all love it. It has 66,000 watches logged on the website. Not a lot. And that's actually pretty low. What do you guys think the average rating is? This time we will start with Lashin. We'll do you again. What do you think it is from zero to five? I'm going to guess that this is 2.7. Lashin guesses 2.7 out of five as the average rating on letterboxd.com. But what does Matt Serafini think? Matt, go ahead. Flat two. A flat two. two? Will Ashen, congratulations. You win the Rotten Tomatoes game this week. It is a 2.6. You're only 0.1 off. Very impressive. Very well done. But yes, that is the Garfield movie. It is still playing in theaters. It's apparently making some money. And, you know, doesn't make sense to me, but what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Maybe there will be a Garfield the movie too, and and it's probably going to be Chris. And Pratt maybe again. they'll actually use Garfield characters this time. Yeah, it might be Ooh. nice. I just Got remembered him. that I didn't tell you guys this, but just above my bed, I I looked to my right and I remembered that over top of my bed, I have a commemorative photo I got last year, which is Jesus as Garfield, but he's in the pose of. Matthew McConaughey from True Detective, where he has the cigarette, you know, where he's like, you know what I'm talking so, about? How do you explain that to the ladies? I, I mean, I can imagine it, you know, where to you're just ladies? kind of like, 
Yeah, you know, you're taking you're taking a nice gal back into your room for a little bit of, you know, hide the pickle. And you're, you're kind of just like, well, you want to know the story behind that? <laughs> I mean, and they're like, well, sure. I would say that I, use, I have that one to distract him from the second commemorative Garfield photo I have on the other side of my wall. That'll do it for this this week at Cinema Hall. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and thank you, Matt Serafini, for being our guest. I sent Thanks you. Uh, guys. <laughs> I sent you the <laughs> this photo. Was a weird John. one, as expected. Yeah. Sorry you hated the movie, Matt, but hey, we'll have you back <laughs> maybe for a movie you don't hate. How about that? Sounds good to me. Yeah. That'll do it for us this week. Thanks as always for listening from the Internet California. I'm John Agroni. All right, I sent you guys both the photos so you have an idea of what what I'm talking about <laughs> from the Internet of Pennsylvania. I'm Will Ashton. And uh, do I do it too? Or? Yeah, yeah. I mean, what do you yeah. think? From the uh, internet, you California, say? I'm Matt Serafini. <laughs> <laughs> Lasagna. Yeah.